Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a new mini-series I'm calling Everything Wrong with X Rank in Rocket League. The premise of this mini-series is to go through each rank, find a replay from ballchasing.com, and just look over the games and give you guys some general tips for each rank and just point out things that I find wrong and just, you know, try to help you guys out. In today's episode, we'll be covering some bronzes, and every video after this is going to be one rank above, so this one's going to be bronze, the next one after that is silver, gold, platinum, you know the rest, so on and so on until we reach SSL or maybe even our LCS pros. This should be a lot of fun, hopefully really informative. If you guys like the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, it really helps me out, man. But other than that, let's get into our ranked bronze game. Alright you guys, we've got our bronze game. Just for reference, we are this for this series, we're going to be doing 2v2, but if you guys want me to, I can redo the series and we can look at other game modes, but for now, we are just going to be looking at 2v2s. And before we start with the replay, I would like to look at everyone's camera settings, and then just assume that, you know, not only am I curious about what camera settings people use at each rank, that type of thing, but I think it is an important thing to cover, at least in the lower ranks, because again, settings are applicable. As much as I want to say settings aren't important, they are kind of important uh, in your success in the game. So if we look here, it seems to me that in bronze, uh, everyone has what I assume is default camera settings, which is this very close up, like, you know, slightly low to the ground camera angle. Uh, so, right, I mean, they're all pretty much, like everyone here almost has the same settings. I think the only person who doesn't have the same settings is this guy. I don't remember his name, but we'll, we'll remember here. But yeah, he, he's the only one who, who seems to th be thinking outside the box, messing around with the settings, and, you know, I, th I think, in my opinion, he has a better better viewing angle than the default. Because, uh, again, I, mean, I know a lot of people who have or are really good skill level-wise with, like, normal camera settings, but you guys gotta understand that this is bronze, and I, I'm just trying to help you guys out, so... It really does help in the end to have camera settings more like these, just a little bit more farther away from the car so that you can see a little bit better, and, you know, not not feel so disoriented and, and you know like you're you're in a tube or something i don't know so my first tip to any new players is just to look for settings you know recommendations you know any friends you have that are higher ranked just just ask for some settings try them out give them a try if you don't like them you know just just go look for some new ones but something that's going to be concurrent throughout the whole time of playing the game is your is you know uh how you feel comfortable you know holding the controller and just you know the way your car moves your camera angle all that stuff it'll change over time your preferences but again it doesn't hurt to look at other people's settings and just give it give them a try experimentation is the key just try try stuff just try a bunch of stuff and eventually hopefully you'll find something you really like all right enough rambling let's go ahead let's see how they do the kickoff very nice Ooh, i like this. this is like this a lot this is a very simple kickoff very effective there you go that works see i mean that, that was very nice i don't know about what everyone else did here so the kickoff Ooh, okay, this is something I see a lot in bronze. Uh, I don't want I don't want to ramble too long I notice like a, a lot of times in the low ranks even between silver and gold This may still be a apparent habit, but they'll uh, back up on the kickoff So this is the main thing I want you guys to take away from this is that you know There's a lot of things wrong with with bronze that I could get into It'd probably be like a two-hour lecture of, of why everything's wrong at some point We're not quite there yet, right? Because in bronze we're trying to balance between you know working on mechanics and also working on our game sense or just like knowing where to be and technique so here this is just strategy right in case the bronze doesn't really have much idea of what a strategy is because he just started the game right you know it makes sense but obviously as we get into the higher ranks and stuff and and more accustomed to the game we'll realize that there are different methods to go about the kickoff and you know they're just going to be in my opinion a lot more constructive ways to, to do the kickoff here than just back up on the beginning back in your own goal right so once again, I don't expect this person to get this right every time, but as you get better, like I said, you'll you'll start thinking about, you know, how, like what kickoff strategies work, what do doesn't work, you know, uh, what puts your teammate in a bad spot, what doesn't, you know, you'll, you'll get the feel for it. But as a general rule of thumb, I like to tell people, at least especially in 2v2s, if we're talking about that game mode, is it just cheat? Just go ahead and just try and cheat up here a little bit. Maybe, maybe since it's a low rank, you could probably cheat up a little bit further back just in case because you know there is a lot of unpredictable kickoffs at this rank because not people are super consistent but yeah you know just try and get a little cheat in there you know and maybe if, if you want to get the big boost there but otherwise that just just anything anything though but but back up in the goal we can do we can do better than that that's fine right so we've nearly gotten out of the in, like the beginning phase here just just a kickoff right let's let's see what Messi does here on the kickoff Okay, he also does a very simple, you know, approach, just boosted the ball. Unfortunately, though, he does not jump. He does not jump on the ball, so unfortunately, he's not going to get great contact there, and I think, if you look here, 
my L. Because he jumps, he's going to get way more force than the ball, so he's going to win that. Very nice. So my main tip here is, as you guys, again, because I assume that these players may be new to the game, that you want to get a feel for how your how your car and the ball interact with each other, right? Because, again, as, when you're really, really new, you don't really... Like, I mean, this is a game of physics. You know, most people kind of know that, but they may, at the same time, it's hard to explain. We don't understand how our, you know, our ball, our car interacts with the ball, and that is kind of like what makes this result of him losing the kickoff. But, I mean, that's just, you know, we're just here to have fun. This is not a big deal, man. You know, we're just getting used to touching the ball, how the ball interacts with the car, yada yada. You know, just getting used to the physics of the game. Like, you know, how do things work? Like, you know, just, this is why I tell people, like, spend a lot of time in free play hitting the ball around. You know, especially in the slower ranks, because then you can get used to the physics, right? Because the physics are, you know, not really the easiest thing to explain, but you can at least feel them out. And then as you get more comfortable with how the ball and the car interact with each other, the better you'll get at the game. It's simple. Okay, shortly after the kickoff, I want to note two things. Number one is we look uh, at the whole picture. So he's just in the kickoff, messy, right? Now, in a high-level lobby, uh, this person will not be, you know, going to the corner here. They'll be rotating around their teammate into the back post here. If you look, kind of like this, right? They'll be they'll be doing this this motion in the back post normally in a high-level lobby. But uh, down here, obviously, we have we have no concept of that at this point. So in his mind, he's like, okay, I see ball, go for ball, right? So number one is at this rank, or at least when you're just starting, you're not going to have these like bigger ideas down or concepts of like how to play the game but once you do like kind of understand them you know you're gonna get way better obviously because you'll be like oh my god that like that makes everything so much simpler so not much to add to that basically knowledge is power that that's basically what i'm going to say for a lot of these lower ranks is it, the more you know the better and that's why we have youtube and stuff you know which is very nice the second thing i want to note here is as well as not you know having that idea down with the back post or whatever uh at this level you know it's going to be common that people just they just see the ball and they want to go for it. They just like, man, I really wanted the ball, you know. Like I said, just, you know, a lot of stuff overlooked here, but it's like, ooh, I see the ball, I'm gonna go for it, right? Um, and obviously as you get better at the game, we'll, you know, we'll grow out of it, but like, this is just a common thing that happens and I see it a lot. But the main things are we gotta remember that we do, in fact, have teammates on our team. Yes, we have teammates, at least if we're playing twos or threes. So again, once you guys get comfortable just with being aware that you do have a teammate and kind of where you are related to them, you know, that's going to help. And then the last point here is it's all it's all ball, but no boost, right? We're like, ooh, ball, 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 right? We love the ball, but you love the ball so much that you forget to get boost, right? Now, I know how much you love the ball. I mean, you're, you're literally chasing it like, like, like a magnet, like you love that thing. But at the same time, you need some boost, man. You're going to have to, you're going to have to pick either one of these up, some of these, or go for one of these, right? Just, you're, you're gonna need it later, you know, so that you can actually do more stuff than maybe just drive around aimlessly with your head cut off, just chasing the ball down. And trust me, man, I, I know the urge to ball chase. I get it, man, I've been there. Don't don't tell me I'm wrong when, when we started playing this game that we were all just straight up ball lovers, you know what I'm saying? And our only purpose in life was to just hit that damn ball, and I, I totally understand. It's okay, though, they grow up fast. All right, if we look blue, he sees the ball, he's gonna go for it, and he's gonna miss. That's unfortunate, but that is literally just part of the game. You will be whiffing all the way up to Grand Champ and it's to sell. It, it literally never stops happening. So basically, for this, my tip here is you just gotta get used to missing. Like, it's just part of the game. I know a lot of people who, who at least when I started out, was like, oh my god, I'm whiffing everything. Like, uh, you know, it just, it's really frustrating. It re it's really frustrating. But you just have to accept that whiffing the ball and just, you know, trying to grow you know get out of your comfort zone and going for things that you maybe aren't comfortable going for is just part of the game and once you you know go for that stuff more you'll get better it, you just have to trust the process and missing is part of the process so don't feel bad if you miss missing happens all the time okay and if we look here uh fred here he's gonna miss and then messi because he's right on top of the ball he's also low boost he's gonna turn right underneath the ball and he's, he's gonna end up doing this over and over again he's actually gonna do it twice i think Something like that. But but basically, I see this a lot in the very, very low ranks where they will, you know, the ball will be kind of like right on top of them, right next to them, but they don't have like good turn control, I guess, if you want to put it that way, or just a sense of like, oh, hey, wait, if I just like maybe stop my, my momentum and let the ball fall in front of me, that maybe it could work, you know? Basically, they just hold the drive button the whole time. So they're just holding R2 or whatever. 
pretty much constantly the whole game and then because they're doing that and they don't have a good sense of space between them and the ball and their momentum they start to just drive under the ball like this and you know that can cause a lot of problems so my main tip here is remember that you do have a brake button you, you shouldn't be holding the gas the whole time and then number two is just at basically especially for the low ranks i want you guys to try your best to do everything in your power to always be behind the ball, not in, out in front of it. So here, obviously, this was, this was an accident. He ended up driving under it and then passed the ball. So now, now he's out in front of the ball, right? Because he's way out in front. Correct. But now, see, this is the thing, though, is that if he could be anywhere just behind the ball, in any case, no matter what, like here, this would really help him out. You know, if he just really, if he's able to focus, like just always being behind the ball a little bit, just being slightly behind it. You know, then you can push it up field properly and you know you'll be able to take 50s really good right because you'll be able to push it into the into the orange team like that and then take a 50 or something so yeah that is my tip there is just to try your best to stay behind the ball best you can so just again a small small side note but i noticed like as he's coming down these walls and stuff there's really he basically doesn't use any drift at all but as you get better at the game you'll realize drift is a very useful mechanic so just make sure you know to get comfortable with your drift turns all right, if we look at Fred here, Fred's gonna do something phenomenal, something I wouldn't expect to him to do, but he beautifully, very beautifully, by the way, stays behind the ball the whole time. Look at that, beautiful, good push. Then, oh my God, he gets boost. He goes and gets boost and, I mean, he, I mean, he got a nice set off the wall. That was crazy. Like, that, that's that's insane, you know, at least, at least for, uh, I mean, I think this is a bronze game, I'm pretty sure. But like, man, look at that. That was crazy. That's crazy good. Now, unfortunately, because he's not, you know, mechanically capable enough or aware enough, he's not going to be able to do much with it. But hey, that was good. That was amazing. Very nice work there with uh, staying behind the ball. Now, my only gripe with this little bit of the game is that, you know, the, these guys, they don't tend to use a lot of ball cam. They're they're pretty, like, that, that button may as well not be binded, right? But it would help him a lot out here. You get a lot better visual of the ball here if you just turn his ball cam on, but he just chooses not to or doesn't know that he. Has, I don't know. Just he didn't. He didn't use the ball cam button. But here, if he just turned it on, even just for a second, it would help a lot. So just make sure, at least in lowering, just try and use a lot of ball cam if you can. Usually, I try and do like a 90-10 rule, like 90% of the time you should have ball cam on, and like oh, maybe only 10% you should have it off. So I would say him like dribbling up the wall with no ball cam off. Or with no ball cam isn't like the worst like here that's fine but somewhere around this point when you lose the ball like that's what that's when you should turn the ball cam on i think or maybe even a little bit before that and then maybe you get down here you can turn it off again but really you should have it on most of the time this is a small thing i want to point out in this instance for here right we we've got a lot of boost like a lot we got a hundred this is a kind of a weird scenario where it's like at, at this level it's like we've got plenty of boost and we don't use enough of it like literally he could use his full tank right now and then go use that same tank to go get more boost at the same time you know like he could he could move like he could be moving around a lot quicker you know if he would just use a little bit of boost or like something right but he chooses not to use any and that kind of makes him really slow so i think funnily enough we're gonna have you know too much boost <laughs> maybe in the low ranks and then not enough boost at the higher ranks because i know at the higher ranks we're like oh my god i never have enough boost it's all gone you know can't find any but down here it's like oh there's all there's all the boost you could ever want basically every pill on the map is like free free for taking like i'm sure there's one there one there like basically there's just tons of boost on the field you know but we're just we're, we don't tend to use the boost button a whole lot here right here we were actually doing pretty good he was like about to rotate into back post but then as i as i see a lot right he just holds end up holding the drive button and then he ends up like he was in a good position initially like he was kind of heading in the right direction he's very well spaced from his teammate right at this point like there's a good amount of space between him and his teammate but because he just keeps on driving and just keeps on driving he ends up throwing his positioning away just by holding his gas button. So he ends up not only closing in on his teammate, closing the gap between the two, but he also loses the advantage of the back post here at the same time. So this is an, an instance where people think, oh, I gotta, I gotta go, 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 right? Like, just gotta go speed. But there's gonna be times here when the, when the play starts to slow down where you have to kind of like stop for a second and be like, okay, wait, I'm in a good spot. If I just be patient here, this will play out to me, right? But again, because again, he's just holding the gas button down, just go, go, going. He's not really thinking about his positioning that much, and that's going to end up throwing out a position. And this is, I don't know, we even know what happened here. This is like a beautiful pass down to his teammate. Bang, down, 
to the right, right down in front of Mayo. Like, that's perfect. But Messi, you know, again, just because of the fact he was driving constantly, you know, ended up throwing himself out of the position, and then this is just a complete wide open net. But it was very avoidable. Like, he had the idea there. It was just, you know, we're just holding the drive button, and then, you know, that's throwing us out of position when we don't need to. Okay, can I just say something real quick? This, this pass was cracked. Like, this was such a good pass. Like, look at this. Bang. Bang, beautiful pass, just straight into the mid. I love this, this is amazing. I don't even know how he pulled it off, but I I'm happy with it. But if we look here, I'm gonna take a gander and just say that he doesn't score. Uh, crazy guess, I know. All right, perfect pass. No, no, he didn't even try to shoot, all right. Now, if this were anyone else, and I, and you know, let let's say it was probably me or, you know, one of you guys down, the down here in the comments or just whoever's watching, you'd be like, whoa. That was literally free. How could you not hit that? You know, but like, yeah, I mean, this is obviously bronze, so obviously I don't expect them to hit shit. But I think you guys would be surprised at like how many times like someone like actually kind of peaks in, th in this case. Like in this case, you know, this guy gets like this guy's peaking right now. Like that's a that's a crazy good pass. Like bang, beautiful pass. But because his teammates aren't quite up to par and just comfortable with that type of thing, they're not going to be able to capitalize with it. So honestly, you could you could be gaming super hard, you know, peaking like this guy is right now, making all these great passes. But then because your teammate is either out of position or doesn't have or hasn't put the practice in, they end up not being able to do anything with it. So something that was perfectly good, cooked to perfection, was all wasted because our teammate, well, just didn't try for it. So I'm going to mark that as a very, this is Rocket League moment, but you'd be shocked like how often this happens, not even just in bronze, but the other ranks too, where you'll be like, oh, I just dimed that kid up, but then the kid doesn't take your dime and do anything with it. And you're like, what? That was perfect. All I'm going to say is it happens, bro. It just happens. I really don't know how else to put this to you guys, but basically it's just, you know, looking back and be like, okay, this was a missed opportunity, you know, and, and just trying to fix it for next time. Once again, just looking, just seeing some patterns here. Uh, there's a big pass out in the middle and Messi just does not touch his boost button. Like boost does not even come to mind here. He's just like drive, drive. It's like, oh, now I'll boost, but then he's just too slow. Boost is good, guys. You can use it. There's plenty of it around, all right? Just use some of it to help speed you up, get places faster. Just looking at this again, so if we look, right, he's getting, he's sort of getting back, but then he ends up, uh, I see this habit a lot. This is a very common thing that I see happening is people will start to be like, oh, I, I need to go, right? And they'll be like, speed, I'll go fast, right? And they think if they just hold that boost down, they'll get there quicker. And that's like not completely wrong, but at the same time, if you guys just knew, at least, you know, whoever these people are, that if you get to the supersonic trail like that, uh, pretty much all the boost after that point is a waste because you can only really go so quick in the game. And once you reach that max speed, the effectiveness of your boost turns from like really good to bad. So we could argue here that 40% of his boost was completely useful and then the other 60% was not any good. So that's just something that's gonna have to develop and get better over time is your sense of how much boost you're using and just boost management overall so that you know we can use that boost more effectively and then we could become more effective ourselves when we're playing. I like this guy's approach. He just kind of goes for it. He's like, ooh, yeah. Cheat up. I mean, he literally just cheated up on the corner, which is actually something I would do. I would probably cheat up, like, if we're just going, you know, meta here. Uh, if I were to do this, I would go, like, here, and then maybe, like, a little off the side. But otherwise, though, not terrible. Like, obviously, I wouldn't, like, blindly drive in, into the corner right here, you know, with no regards of how the 50 could go. But... I, li I like the effort here, you know? I'm just saying what I would do, which is like kind of like that, and then maybe a little bit off the side, and then, you know, you're kind of in the right spot. Bang, ready to go. And now, because he's so ballsy uh, here, he actually almost gets a goal. He ends up popping it forward a little too hard, and he's not able to catch up with it, but damn, that was actually all right. I'm just saying, guys, I, I think with that kind of terminology and knowledge, and just finesse, I, I think that guy could go pro. I think he's gonna go pro soon. Here, I just want to say this is a mistake right here. Like, like this is a mistake, him driving up into the orange guy like that. Now, it's a mistake, but it's a mistake that I can predict is going to happen. And the only reason I say that is because so many people between bronze, silver, gold, and heck, maybe even a little bit in platinum, they have no idea what shadow defense is or how to execute it. Basically, I know here, like as a higher level player, like GC, that you should be either fake challenging or shadowing or both like here push fake challenge turn back and then shadow defend now 
again, like I said, in those Lord of the Rings, people just don't, this doesn't even just come to their head. They don't even know it's a thing. I swear. Like, Shattered Defense is not in their mental vocabulary as of yet. And just because of that one fact that they don't know what Shattered Defense is, or Fake Challenging, or any of that, they end up making this mistake every single time, because they don't get it. Like, they don't understand, like, what the danger is of doing this, right? They don't understand it. And they don't also understand the, the way to fix it, you know, of why this is a mistake. But if you guys want to rank up, definitely get into the habit of Shattered Defense and Fake Challenges, and I guarantee you'll, you'll start ranking up easily. I haven't made a personal guide on Shadow Defense just yet, but I really should, honestly, if I think about it. But until I do, do your best to either learn from someone better than you or go on YouTube and, and look up Shadow Defense, but it's really going to help you guys out and it's going to prevent this mistake that I see all the time, which is just driving straight into the orange team when they have possession, rather than, you know, fake challenging or just doing anything more constructive that's going to help you win the games, whatever. I just want to point out here again, this is a very nice example from... Mr. Leaflick, um, of just him staying behind the ball. Like, he just stays behind the ball very, very nicely here. And that allows him to get a nice dribble down the field here. So because he never because he never ends up hooking out in front of the ball, he's able to keep his play going the whole time. Whereas if he, if he ends up driving past the ball at any point, he's going to lose all his momentum and any anything that he has with the ball. But here, like I said, he, like I said, he stays behind the ball super nice. And because of that, he is able to dribble down and keep possession for as long as possible until he gets bumped i just want to say well done there from from mr left i'm seeing this this guy this is a very confident like this is more confident than i was expecting for like an aerial and i, I thought bronzes never got off the ground if i'm being honest with you but i think because this is season 11 i should probably expect more than that people are getting better at every rank no matter what so i, I should probably assume that this isn't like totally uncommon for people to try and go for that but I appreciate the confidence, though. This is amazing. Like, heck, he may, he, may, he may not even know why he's doing that or if it's even the right thing to do, but the confidence is what I love. Like, just just, just the confidence to even try and go for that, that, that's what I like the most. Like, just not being scared to mess up and just be like, all right, well, I know I know it's a ranked game, but, like, man, you know, I'm going to try that. I'm going to push myself here. And I think that's important. Like, if you want to get better, you have to push yourself. You have to go for stuff that you're not comfortable going for. Like, how, how else are you going to learn how to play? You know what I mean? Now, I will say he is on blue team, so he is kind of setting him up, himself up for either an own goal or pass to the other team, which is not the best. But I like the confidence, okay? Just don't judge me for it. I like, I like that he tried it, even though if it might have ended up you know, passing the other team. And unfortunately, Fred is gonna try and attempt to clear here, but it's gonna end up being an own goal. That is really unfortunate, but own goals happen all the time, even at the highest rank. So own goals are not technically a mistake. I mean, they are a mistake, but most of the time it's not, that doesn't, all because you own goal does not make it a mistake every time. Sometimes the own goal is inevitable or like you were already set up for it for failure, like somewhere earlier in the play, but don't take own goals as mistakes take on goals as a learning opportunity and see where things went wrong as a team to cause that you know to happen i'm seeing with some of these players they have like a slight idea of rotation it's definitely not perfect it's it could obviously have a lot of improvement but i mean you know he knows like he should be back a little bit you know he knows he should be going around his teammates somewhat you know i would say he goes a little bit too far back that's not a big deal and that's, I mean, look, that was actually, like, for, for his level, like, I'd say that was actually pretty good rotation. But, you know, obviously, uh, as I'm seeing here as a pattern, people aren't really very, you know, adamant about using boost. They're kind of more like a drive and flip kind of guys, you know, like drive, flip, maybe do a little turn like that. You know, that's pretty nice, you know. But like I said before, you know, if we can use boost and maybe, like, obviously, if we can use boost or the pads and stuff and then turn back in, that would be best. Not expecting anything crazy at this level. This is just a small thing, but uh, you'll notice as we get in the higher ranks, uh, recoveries are going to look a lot different. It's not that people don't have an idea of what recovering is. Like, they sort of know, okay, I'm going to try my best to land on my wheels so, you know, I can get going again. Like, they kind of have a general idea of, like, okay, yeah, that's what I should be doing. But you'll see, you know, again, as we get into later episodes, that people will start to get a little bit quicker and save a little bit of boost just so they can, you know, land on their car and orient it so they can land on their wheels more often so they can get around quicker. So you'll just notice in the lower ranks, you know, people don't have the best recovery mechanics, but I mean, there's not really much mechanics in general here, so that's to be expected. But I will say this, if you if you work on your recoveries, if you get faster at, you know, jumping up and down at the walls and stuff, you're gonna you're gonna get a lot better, I promise. Just wanna say my, my boy Messi over here, he's kinda wild in my guy. He's kinda up on the ceiling right now. He's kinda crazy. Oh. Oh, oh look at that. Bang, he's insane. Oh, Andy even landed on all four wheels. My man's a recover legend, dude. Now I don't know why he was up there, but you know. I'm not gonna question it so if you guys notice here 
big Fred, after that last goal, he kind of stops playing. And, you know, I don't know what I, I don't know what's going through his head right now. Maybe he's kind of upset about the last goal. You know, maybe, you know, he's down. Maybe he's like, man, I just had a rough day. You know, you don't know what people are going through. This game's hard. So is life. So that's just how it is, man. In this case, if he is having a bad day, I wish him the best. I hope that, you know, he's able to recover from, from this loss and come back a stronger man or woman, whoever this person is, and that this loss won't affect them for the rest of their lives and that they can move on. But assuming his life is not in shambles after this loss, I'm just going to take this as him being upset after getting 3 0 And so my last point with this is probably just mentality. Like, obviously, the way you approach the game and, you know, the way you feel about it is going to impact your performance and your decisions that you make. So I'm assuming here that he could play the game by default but chooses not to out of what I, maybe frustration or something like that but you guys gotta remember that this is just a game and that this is not your whole life probably so it's okay to every once in a while take a break and if you're not taking a break then just remember that this is literally you guys got two minutes here you know there is you know time to come back and honestly you're, you're better your time is better spent you know, trying to get better and like, you know, actually play the game rather than AFKing. Because what people at this level, they need more time. They need more experience with hitting the ball and, and moving their car around. Sorry if I rambled a lot there, but like, but my point is you guys got to be able to take an L. And even if it's not just about taking an L, then it's about taking breaks and resetting your mental so that you can play a better game tomorrow or later in the day. Mentality is super, super important. I think it gets overlooked. And just to end the game out, Mail, he's going to get a little pass out the middle and his teammate is going to finish it off and then they're going to end up forfeiting. And I'm not in Messi's mind, but I'm assuming that probably kind of hurt knowing that his teammate gave up on him, you know? And that, that really that really is, you know, not, not great for the mental. So if you wonder why you're not winning games or you're going on losing streaks, it's probably, you know, I'm not saying it's because you're giving up, but if you give up, don't expect the other person to want to keep playing and give you the win. Like, if you want to give up like that, if you want to stop mid-game, just stop playing altogether, then you don't deserve to win that game. I'm sorry, you don't. Like, you need to respect people's time and respect the fact that people are on the game to, like, they're trying to help you win. They're trying to help you. But, like, if you, if you don't give in and, and just play your part, then you don't deserve to win. I'm sorry. But if I didn't make this clear, I understand these people are bronze. This is just, like, some casual thing, probably. Like, it's not a big deal. You know, I'm just trying to generalize it for everyone who's trying to learn from this. Because I really don't think that anything that's happening here in these bronze lobbies is, is much different than what can happen in, in even, you know, Grand Champ or above lobbies. Like, you know, this stuff still happens in every game to some degree my final note before closing out this video is that rocket league is a really hard game so do anything in your power to make the game feel more enjoyable whether that be friends whether that be freestyling i don't know i don't, I don't care what it is you know just the only thing that matters if you want to keep getting better is that you just keep playing you know and just have fun you know fun is the pin honestly i think with bronze right Bro the thing that bronzes have over every other rank is their ability to just play casually and not, and not care as much, you know, but in the higher ranks, I noticed like people care so much, even from day one, shouldn't care. Like, not that you shouldn't care about your skill level, but like, you know what I mean? Like just this ability to like have childlike approach to the game where you're like, you just laugh all the time. You're like, man, like I'm just having a good time. You know, like, I feel like that's the most important thing is just having a good time. That's how you get through these tough moments of the game where you're like, man, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, you know, and you just lose hope because you're like, man, I just don't enjoy the game anymore. But if you could just keep it loose, keep it fun, don't overthink it, you're gonna have a great time and you're gonna wanna keep playing and you'll get better. All right, you guys, that'll be it for the Everything Wrong With Bronze episode. If you guys like the content, let me know down in the comments. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.